So, having finished the entire ECG course, I will go through the steps and summary of ECG reading. So, the before touching the ECG, please remember you have to clinically examine the patient. We have a good clinical data before we record an ultracardiogram. So, please remember to correctly connect the electrodes and correctly place the chest electrodes on the appropriate places to record the correct ECG. Please connect the electrodes properly because we have already told you how to test a technician is to ask him to place V3. The V3 should be placed between V2 and V4. So, tease the paramedics according to the color. So, we told you about the uh, V1, V2, V3, remember the traffic signal and for the V4, V5, V6, we told you to remember the BOP. And on all ECGs, we must have the clinical details of the patient and what age and what is the uh, sex of the patient. Then you look at the standardization, 10 millimeter standardization and the speed of recording of 25 millimeter per second speed. So, without never interpret an ultracardiogram. We will start with the P wave. P wave is due to atrial depolarization. So, when the P waves are tall, it is right atrial enlargement. P waves are wide, it is left atrial enlargement. When the P waves are inverted in inferior leads, P waves are inverted, we must see where they are inverted. If they are inverted in L1 and upright in AVR, we must suspect either dextrocardia or technical dextrocardia. So, you can see that here, the P wave is inverted in L1 and upright in AVR. So, but look at the chest leads. The left sided chest leads have got no QRS, whereas right sided chest leads have got progression of R wave. That means your heart is on the right side. So, this is a true dextrocardia. Whereas, when you have a P wave, so in limb leads, when a P wave is inverted in L1 and operate in AVR, look at the left side leads and the right side leads. If the R wave is progressing in the right side leads, it is a true dextrocardia. Whereas, look at the CCG here. Here, the P wave is inverted in L1, operate in AVR, but that QRS is progressing normally over the left side leads. That means your left heart is on the left side. Here, it is appearing like a dextrocardia because of the limb lead reversal by the technician. So, this is called technical dextrocardia. So, true dextrocardia, the R wave will be progressing on the right side. In a technical dextrocardia, R wave will be normally progressing on the left side. So, if the P waves are absent, it can be atrial fibrillation or sinus pass. If the, the, if the P waves are occurring on a T wave or the ST segment, most often you are dealing with an atrioventricular dissociation. If the P wave is abnormal in shape, I told you about atrial premature beat or in atrial tachycardia, in atrial flutter, the P waves will be abnormal in shape because the depolarization is occurring from atrial ectopic pacemaker. Um, it is not, if the P wave is not followed by QRS complex, suspect atrioventricular block, which can be third degree or second degree atrioventricular block which can be complete heart block or secondary atrial ventricle block. So, this is about the P wave absent, occurring on a T wave, abnormal in shape, not followed by QRS complex. Then look at the PR interval, normal PR interval 0.12 to 0.21 second. If the PR interval is too long, it is a first degree atrial ventricle block. Then look at the QRS. If the QRS is wide with the first degree atrial ventricle block, it is infra his delay. So, you have to have an aggressive management. If the PR interval is too short, it can be a WPW syndrome or pattern, presence of Kent pathway bypassing the AV node. So, if the patient has got a tachycardia, it is WPW syndrome. If the PR interval is varying, it could be an AV dissociation of either complete heart block or ventricular tachycardia. If the variable PR interval is happening, so the PR interval is not constant and is continuously varying, it is an AV dissociation. If it is a bradycardia, it is complete heart block. If it is a tachycardia, it is VT. Then we come to the uh, QRS, any Q wave is present, it, so please remember it is physiological versus pathological Q wave. Pathological Q wave represents chronic total occlusion of infarction.